Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. It looks like we have a cooking show today. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wondered how cheesemakers manage to make the same type of cheese in different parts of the world? Don't they just inoculate it with fungus? Well, no. A cheese, especially the rind, is actually a very complex community of both fungi and bacteria that really gives it every cheese its very unique uh, flavor and characteristics. Hmm. Well, if it's such a complex community, how can cheesemakers control it? That's a good question and maintain it over hundreds of years. Some of these cheeses have been cultured for a long time. Well, and that is what the craft is all about. A big part of it is how you treat the rind. You get natural, washed and bloomy rinds. Natural rinds, uh, they are um, things like uh, Parmesan, Manchego uh, and Chantel. And um, so Cantel is one of the oldest cheeses in France, and uh, it actually dates back from uh, the time of the Gauls, and uh, it is, is still being made, obviously. And Bloomy cheeses, they have this heavily inoculated uh, surface, and here you can see the Liche de Bourgogne, and we've got some Brie here, and these are very classic uh, surf, um, Bloomy cheeses. And then, of course, here, some of my total favorite, the wash, washed rinds, and, and these are what a lot of people call the stinky cheeses, Ooh. or flavorful cheeses, I would think. <laughs> um, and they uh, are cheeses like Telegio, uh, I've got Chimay here, and then I've got Limburger, and they are usually washed in brine, and they get this pinky orange color, and a very particular smell from Brevibacterium linens. And uh, it's, it's just very characteristic of these cheeses. But anyway, <laughs> did you see the paper by Wolf et al? Um, they sequenced 137 cheese rind communities across 10 countries and found 24 widely distributed genera of bacteria and fungi as dominant community members. I mean, the amazing thing is that the community types were reproducible independent of the geographic location, but depended more on the rind type and moisture in the cheese, um, in the cheese rinds. You know, that that's, was really surprising. You would think that different areas of the world would have different, different communities, yeah. but it really depends on the rind. And the most surprising thing actually for me was that the bacteria... 60% uh, of the bacteria and about 25% of the fungi in the cheese rinds were not present in the starter culture, but they must have come from the environmental sources. You know, didn't they identify bacterial genera that have never been reported in food microbial ecosystems? You know, that's absolutely right. For example, the halo-tolerant G. proteobacteria, it's widespread in, in cheese communities in all geographic regions. You know, this is unexpected because these bacteria are typically associated with marine environments. So where <laughs> could they have come from? Good question. They probably came from the sea salt used in cheese production. Ah. Bokelich and Mills uh, from 2013 detected uh, G. proteobacteria in brine tanks of cheese production facilities. Wait, so how can you be sure no pathogens are getting in there? Well, you know, that's the trick with, with any of these uh, complex uh, foodstuffs. You want to maintain the community so that the good bugs will naturally kill off the bad ones. And you would also uh, control the pH and so on really very carefully. Mm. In this study, they found four widespread positive and negative interactions between the bacteria and the fungal community members. This would suggest that species interactions or environmental factors, so like for communities with with similar compositions. In, in fact, there is there's even evidence of gene transfer between cheese-making fungi. Cheeseman et al, seriously, <laughs> uh, reported multiple recent transfer of huge genomic island between penicillium species found in uh, P. roqueforti, and um, they found that this 575 kilobase long genomic island is present in identical fragments in non-homologous loci in P. camemberti and P. rubens. In case you're wondering, P. rubens is, is uh, used in penicillin production. I was thinking of the sandwich, but anyway. <laughs> that is very unusual. I mean, if you think of gene transfer, you know, it's common to think of gene transfer between bacteria, uh, but you normally don't think of gene transfer between eukaryotes, especially like fungi. Did they look for 
phages that might have helped? You know, that's a cancer? really, really good point. The Wolf paper sequenced 16S RNA, so they could not have seen phages or plasmids for that matter. Mm. In a paper by Erkes et al., they used whole genome sequencing to show that phages play an important role in maintaining the complexity of cheese starter cultures. And this happens through a process called kill the winner. That's now, nice. it, <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but if you really think about it, phages home in on the dominant microbes because that is a, a rich source of food. And um, due to the predation in the culture, it reduces the population of those microbes. So there is a lot to maintaining this balance and complexity in the system. You know, it is cool to see that they were able to identify the pathways associated with flavor production in washed rind cheeses. Yeah, you would never think that you would use genomics uh, to, to check for, for flavor production, right? Exactly. But um, in fact, yes, they, they found cysteine and methionine metabolism, and this produces the volatile sulfur compounds, and you really can smell it. I can Ooh. smell it here where I'm yes. sitting. And uh, <laughs> as well as pathways for valine, leucine, and isoleucine degradation. And these contribute to the sweaty or putrid aromas that really uh, are enriched in these washed rind cheeses that, that we have here. And just smelling them really is starting to make me hungry here. Oh, I don't think I can say the same. In, you know, in our You Are What You Eat Simon episode, we talked about how the microbial population in your gut is influenced by the food you eat, which in turn can influence your health. It makes you realize just how important it is to eat these natural products to maintain a healthy and balanced diet. Artisans have been making cheese for thousands of years, but it is only now that we have the genomic tools to begin to understand how complex, elegant, and beautiful the system really is. You know, thanks for watching this episode. As always, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to reach out to us with questions, suggestions, or any feedback. We do love hearing from you. Take care and see you next time. Bye. Bye.